my god, hello there. Um, guess what? It's fucking playoffs, bitch. Damn. Bitch. Holy shit. Holy Already. fuck. Already. Already we're playoffs. Here. I mean, whole, I mean, where, where am I? What's going on? You know, what a quick, quick uh, split, to be honest. This is quarterfinals against arguably two of the, uh, let's see, I don't want to say inconsistent, but some teams that have shown us some crazy shit that they just whipped out uh, randomly in some of the games that they played. DA Obsidian, uh, the, they're the guys who did that insane comeback. Literally, Nexus is open, and then <laughs> counter push all the way uh, to the enemy Nexus, and they win. And then UMass had another crazy comeback last week. Um, so now we get to see those two combine and fight each other, and maybe they get to do that to each other a couple times. And we all get to witness it and enjoy it. What a lovely time. Oh, yeah. We used to have uh, interviews with uh, UMass squad right before this. And they were saying they were just going to vibe. They were just going to play whatever they were going to play. And they were going to they were gonna stomp. They were confident. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Frymaster96 said they were going to stomp. They're going to stomp. Wow. That's nice to hear because I know, I know that they were, you know... Not too sure in the beginning. Of course, this is the beginning. The chemistry. They said the chemistry wasn't there. A new team. Not a lot of stuff together. But here are the standings. Um, you know, Vegan mm -hmm. Chicken's still up there going crazy. Raw Reapers. Not much has changed. I don't know if anything has changed, actually. Pretty <laughs> similar to last week. But, of course, you see fourth and fifth seed here. DA Obsidian and UMass Amherst going against each other tonight in a best of three. So, at most, three games. Minimum, there will be two games. But, yeah, you guys possibly get an extra game to witness from these freaks um yeah bada bing um he's absolute reject right <laughs> i mean you gotta play in the sls you know something went wrong <laughs> <laughs> just saying there um so yeah those are the standings not too bad um and there's the bracket for you so we do see vegan chickens with their buy <laughs> that bracket's tough i mean two teams yeah. did have to drop but vegan chickens and raw reapers with their auto buys um, they will take that. Tonight, we get to see who faces them in the semis. And then, yeah, we go from there. HSGV and BRG seeing what they can do um, against each other later on. And then they will face Raw Reapers. And then, of course, you know, go, go from there, go to the final. We'll see what ends up happening there. But bada bing. Um, and then, of course, next week is Thanksgiving in the USA. Um, Turkey and shit. I, you know, I love, you know, uh, stuffing's good. Pie. <laughs> You know, your family comes over, you have some stuff, you go to bed, you take a nap, you leave, and like an hour after you come, no, no. Spend time with your family, it's very important stuff. Uh, if you can, of course. So yeah, next week we won't be around, obviously, Thanksgiving. Um, I will personally be playing a lot of RuneScape. I love RuneScape so much. Oh yeah, Al Karid's music goes hard. Holy fuck. That goes Don't hard. Oh my God, it just slams. Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah, we have a couple interviews. Uh, here we go, right into the interviews for y'all before the game begins. Yes, sir. So, how are you feeling about today's playoff game? Uh, we're feeling really confident. Okay, why is that? What's going on? What you cooking? Um, just had a good week of scrims. Um, mm -hmm. you know, games recently have been going really well for us, and, uh, just feeling good. I got that, okay. And, without giving too much... Have you got anything special planned for your first match? Nope, nothing special. <laughs> All right, All right. Well, just, just wing it, I guess. <laughs> Go in there and mess them up. I like the honesty. And so, do you have any thoughts on your opponents today? You want to say? Um, about them? yeah, I think you. I think I think you mess is a strong team. I think I've been playing a lot better than we played them the first time. Um, our last game with them was pretty close, and you know, I think they'll be a solid opponent. All right, and. What about your power rankings? You can check it out on our <laughs> website. Everyone, go to SLS. I'm not sure. Yep. Hold on. SLS.lol. And uh, check out the news section. You can see the power rankings. And Void wrote the power rankings. Okay. Void's official. <laughs> so how are you feeling about the power rankings? Is there any team in particular you're scared of? Um, I wouldn't say scared. Um, I think All as right. a team, we're feeling very confident going into playoffs. Um, we did just recently lose to HGS, so I placed them first. Mm -hmm. But um, very confident against every other team. 
And what do you attribute that loss to? Do you guys think you patched that up? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think we did. Got you. We 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 scrimmed them again this week. I'm not gonna leak the results or anything, but I think we fixed it. Okay. Well, I think we can infer how those scrims went, regardless. <laughs> so, I mean, is there any spicy picks or thing about playing today? No. Uh, do you have any uh, strats you're going into this with? Nope. Meta. You're just winging it. <laughs> going, going, going with the meta. All right. I respect it. All right, and how do you think about the meta shift we saw? I mean, you may have seen uh, T1 versus JDG last week. Um, how do you feel about that meta shift for long-range engaged poke comps? Um, well, I have not been keeping up with Worlds, to be honest. Um, mm. I'm going to watch finals this week, coming weekend, but um, I'm actually a mid-main, and my main is Velkos, so Ooh, oh, okay. I, oh, I love yeah. this. Matt, I love okay. yep. So I am a Velkaz OTP. He is only okay. Velkaz. I can attest and to this. He's he's the most beautiful champion in the game. Clearly, absolutely agreed. I don't know about that, but so I got a couple questions. So one, are you gonna bust the Vel out in this tournament? Are we gonna see him Vel top lane? Being top lane, probably not. Well, that's a shame. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> and uh, for Vel, how do you feel about this whole? shenanigans with freak kind of going off on all of us who main Velkaz kind of calling us silly and dumb frankly and uh azap's did he war say that? yeah he did he did wow. i don't know are, are you strong... familiar with the whole all the drama around the Velkaz buffs nope oh my god yeah well definitely catch <laughs> up on that it's crazy freak called us all stupid and not that we didn't know our champ so, sounds okay like freak. And, then he, <laughs> and then he got so much flame for it he quit social media it's all Wait, real. actually? Yeah, this is all real. Over Velkaz? Over Velkaz. That's a crazy, crazy drop. Because a bunch of Velkaz mains went on strike. Oh, they I heard stopped about this. playing yeah, yeah. it. Including you. Yeah. You quit your job for this, right? I here. did. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm homeless because of Velkaz. <laughs> I mean, ride or die. <laughs> ride or die right there. All right. But in all seriousness, do you have a few top lane champs that you're looking at without giving off too much? You know, just vague idea of what you'd want to play well um i always play for the team so um uh you'll you will probably see me on a tank in the top lane some malphites all Orin. right yep. weak side top laner thank you for the interview void i'm gonna wrap it up now and good luck in your game good luck man take it easy hey time thanks guys how's it going what's going on man doing good how are you guys doing doing all right yeah we're doing well so how are you right. feeling about the playoffs I'm feeling pretty confident. I, I think we can definitely take it home. I, I feel very good. Okay, well, we just interviewed Boyd, and he's also feeling confident. So do you feel like you're feeling more or less? Oh, yeah. I'm feeling more confident than him. Ooh, okay. Okay, right. oh, that's fine. Sure. No, no, we're going to win, I think. Uh, Ooh, yeah, okay. Spicy. I like we that. We did. Last week, we did play against the Obsidian. We did lose. Mm -hmm. I, I am just going to say something. They did... Uh, for the first half of the series, not have a 300 LP Masters ADC, then all of a sudden they have a 300 Masters oh. ADC. Oh, uh, we were not aware of this. They are, if that guy's there, we are prepared for it this time. Okay. I think that we are better than them in all other roles except for bot lane, and now we have a plan for that. I think we can definitely win. Wow. Ooh, shots fired. Is, yeah. He's saying that's, that we gap you. Yeah. yeah. The gap, yeah. okay. Yeah. And how, how have scrims been going for you guys? DA Obsidian, they're feeling pretty confident about their scrims. We're feeling pretty good. Uh, we haven't been like scrimming that much, but we have been playing together. I think our, as a team, one of our problems is just like communication. We have different <laughs> ideas. I think playing like <laughs> more casually <laughs> together, playing like ranked flex and stuff instead of like scrims gotcha. like pod review, we get into arguments a lot. So just like Ooh. understanding each other's play styles stuff and more, it's definitely gonna help. So that's a strat you want to mimic old school TSM? <laughs> sure, yeah, why not? Get, get into Who is the Reginald of your, uh, your squad here? <laughs> Who we call? <laughs> it's blue card the people. blue cards. Yeah. It's uh, I uh, so, I are, are you a trouble. fan of uh, French fries? What's with the fry master? What's what? What does the name come from? Fry master. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I think I just made it when I was. I, I don't know what I was thinking. I made this when <laughs> I was stuck very with young. Through the years, I respect it. Oh yeah. Gotcha. Are you familiar with the show Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Uh, no, I can't say. I'm said, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I'm not okay, either. Well, you're on your own. I'm on not one. rooting you're for on your you own. now. Okay, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, no, no, we'll win anyway. It's okay. But do you guys have a strategy 
today. I mean, you shouldn't really share too much. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm not going to say what it is. Yeah, right yeah. We definitely have a plan. We've talked about it. We learned from last week we're not losing mm -hmm. again. Be this team. We're against vegan chickens. Uh, I think we're going to beat them too. I think every game we played against them, we've won. Then wow. the finals yeah. going to be pretty close. It just depends on this game. If we if we win this game, I think we definitely go to finals and the games are going to be close. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. That's a lot of pressure. How are you feeling about that? You know, it's... I'm happy. Uh, last week when we played against them, I was auto-filled mid lane because uh, my mid laner was unavailable. This time I'm going to be main role. I think we got it. Yeah. And I, um, have you been watching Worlds? Are you, how are you feeling about the meta shift now that people are discovering that uh, you can bring some long-range poke into the game? You know, previously it was such a hard engage composition uh, dominant meta. I don't think, I, I think it's interesting. I, I think it definitely favors T1. They like playing their like Caitlyn fucking supports. Sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this interview. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's gonna affect our gameplay too much. Our, our support loves playing as engaged champions. I think we work very well with it. I don't think it's very smart to just change up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. If something's been working for you, definitely don't switch it up during playoffs. That would be, uh, that'd be yeah. really dancing with danger. It is true. And I guess, Tyler, you had some questions. Did I? I had some questions. <laughs> uh, so what? So with 96, is that just the year you were born, or is there some special significance behind uh, 96? And why uh, not 69? Uh, is what everyone's asking. <laughs> yeah, that uh, was the question I was asking. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, my name was Fry, and then uh, me and my friend wanted to have, like, matching names. They were both, like, the word master. He took 69, so I just flipped it. it is okay, it okay. Is. So it's not your birth year or anything like that? It's just uh, no. 96? Okay. First no, I'm, uh, 69 I'm a, I'm a young... Nope, I'm a young 2003. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. All right, well, that's all we have for tonight. We wish you good luck, Frymaster96, not 69. <laughs> no, not 69. <laughs> but all right. in all seriousness, good luck tonight. Yeah, good luck, Thank man. you. Yep. Hey, bada bing, those are the interviews. Bada ching. Now we're right into the pick band. Uh, Fiddlesticks, Pike, A Soul Band, Maokai, Oriana, Thresh Band. Then, DA Obsidian picks J4 Swain. <sighs> then, UMass picks Grays Rakan. Oh my god. What could it be? What are they going to do? What are these teams Wild. thinking? What are they thinking right now? And now Nautilus. We got the naughty Nautilus coming through. He's naughty. Look at him. He, yeah. wants, he wants to... He just wants to grab people. Unannounced. It's, it's terrible. He's a fiend. We got Ziggs. Okay. It's probably going to be a Ziggs bot lane. Oh, he's scary. Look at him. I mean... Who is Ziggs? Why? What made this guy so? I don't, I don't want to say pyromaniac because he loves explosives. Mm -hmm. What's the explosive equivalent? I don't know. Yeah, I actually don't know. It's a great question. I mean, he he can also just spawn these bombs. He maybe just takes them out of his ass. I don't know. They are constantly raining from the sky. Whoever's in the bot lane, assumedly, um, is gonna have a hard time farming. Maybe because you know he's just gonna throw a bomb and then another one and then another one. And Rakan's gonna pop you up. He's gonna steal your. He's gonna steal your movement. Bye. Okay, I like the Kench ban. You know, you really don't want anyone diving on your Swain. It's really hard for him to, to uh, get his root into pull off when Tom Kench can interrupt that and then eat the carry. You know, it's I, honestly a huge cock block. For Just sure. Straight up. He's a freak. He is a freak. I mean, he swallows people. Yeah, it's a little weird. It is weird. You know? Imagine seeing a catfish that big. He just lumbers towards you. He can yeah. run fast, too. Don't, you know? He does swag walk. He's got, honestly, a better swag walk than Heimerdinger. Oh, my God. I miss Heimer. Give me a Heimer <laughs> game, please. Anyone. Get Orn out of here. Give me a Heimer game. And we got the Orn in a mouth fight, so it's going to be a noodle fight top lane. Uh, uh, Very exciting gameplay top. I mean, you know, top used to be cool. I True. don't know. It used to be cool. It used to have, like, these... You know, crazy little champions. You remember Elise and Nidalee top? Holy shit. Those were pretty hype games. Nidalee, I think I like Nidalee better now. True, old, yeah. old Nidalee where you just, hey, I'm going to throw a spear at you. Maybe it does a thousand damage or maybe I fucking miss and I can't shit. do anything. Now, at least, you know, you throw it and you get the hmm, the big pounce range. That's nice. All the resets and everything like that. Oh, Hecarim yeah. Is we got here. a full locked in team. We got Gravy, Rakan, Ziggs, Orn, and Hackerim on the side, of, uh, UMass side. J4, Swain, Nautilus, Malphite, Tristana on um, DA, yep. Re uh, Obsidian Reapers, rather. 
And frankly, I'm really liking Obsidian's comp way better. They're way, looking way nuts. Better. They're looking a little spicy, uh, ready to fight anyone. Um, and there could be like, you know, two V3s and they can win it, I feel like, because there's so much stuff going on on that team. They're right into it. And we got Graves mid, which I really don't like because Graves was recently nerfed. He's got less armor and he's against a Tristana mid, one of the craziest hyper carries early game in the game for mid lane. He's going to struggle. I mean, that guy can't even attack Tristana if he wanted to, if there's a couple minions in the way. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that still a thing? Like, it, Yeah. It, yeah, so he, they don't pierce. That guy is going to have a, a tough time um, early game for sure. And we see something spicy already. D Obsidian. Oh, my God. So... Okay, Hecarim is not looking. He's getting horsed up, and he's dead. And that's the worst thing that could happen to him. Hecarim's an early game jungler. You rely on those early game kills and those skirmishing, and now you're behind, giving the kill off to the enemy jung. Uh, I'm sorry, to the enemy mid laner, which is <laughs> you don't terrible. Want that on the Trist. I mean, the Trist yeah. is already gonna, already gonna hurt this Graves guy. But and look then... at that. Starting with a long sword and oh, no. a um, Doran's blade mid. She's going to destroy this Graves. Certainly. Um, yeah, not ideal. You know, I heard some places do eat horse. I think that they <laughs> they do. I think these guys do. Um, you know, let me know. I would try it. I'm down to try almost any food. Um, I don't know if that's crazy, but, you know. DA Obsidian <laughs> confirmed French. <laughs> Delicious. Um, so, I, okay, we see the minions coming in here. Um, the destruction is going to begin. Oh, a little bit of a... Looks like a mini invade from the bot lane, Nautilus, and Swain. Oh, just warding. Okay, okay. Yep, Hecarim's not going to be over there for a little bit, but they will know when he does arrive. They definitely know his path. They, they um, pinged those, with the, I mean, raptors. They pinged them, so they know, they know where he's going. And I'm not really a big fan of this Rakan Ziggs bot lane. I mean, Ziggs wants to stay away, especially from a Nautilus Swain. This is not the comp you want to dive into unless you have a carry like Kaisa that can really skirmish and div, you know, dive and weave in between skill shots. Definitely true. And Zig's already getting hit by a hook. Going to take a bit of damage there. Nothing too crazy, but Nautilus take a little bit as well. That guy can handle it. Um, pop up from the Rakan. A little bit of damage. Another root. Oh, it's level two though. So they want to run away. Uh, we do Ooh. see the, yep, the Ignite from the Rakan. Forces Nautilus to flash pretty low now. Um, that level two mid uh, mid fight there was unfortunate for DA Obsidian's bot lane, but I don't think they are ready to go back just yet. Still very healthy. Got some pots. Still the beginning of the lane. Oh, and they want it. I no, mean, they're yeah. going for the Ziggs. They want it. Oh, this yeah. Guy. Well, they know the strength of their comp early. I mean, up to level seven or eight, this the Swain is just going to snowball and roll over Ziggs, who really needs a lost chapter at least to start doing real damage. Oh, Lost Chapter will be so nice on that guy when he does finally get it. And top lane as riveting as it looks. Just two people slapping each other every now and again while they're farming. It's just absolutely incredible gameplay. Right. It'll be way better, hopefully, when the jungler goes up there, if that ever occurs. Yeah, um, and, and frankly, um, the junglers really should focus bot. They're two weak side laners. They don't need many ooh. items to be relevant. Ooh, that's a CC chain. Ryan to work on. That guy's done. He's done -zo. Oh, he's done. Oh, and Ziggs is getting some too. Oh boy, Hecarim's coming down now. Hecarim is on his way down. Ziggs. Oh, Ooh. okay. So the flash. Oh, the minions blocked him a little bit there. Gets Ziggs the kill, but a very clean flash from the Swain. Otherwise, a good pickup. He had that for sure if that damn minion didn't block him there. Unfortunate, but still comes out on top. Rakan and Ziggs both died. Nice flash spot. by the by killing, and I really like how Nautilus shoves the lane up, make sure it resets for his laner when he reses and comes back. True, that is very you know, that's what sets the supports apart from each other, I think. Mm -hmm. Those little nuances. Um Swain will definitely notice that on his way back. Uh very nice for them. The thing with Ziggs too is that that guy kind of and innately pushes. If he's you know, if he's trying to last hit something with a Q, he gets his auto attack timing wrong, he needs to throw a Q, he's gonna push. He's going to do a lot of damage to the minions around it, so that's not good for him. For sure, and in the mid lane, Graves is being shoved to his turret. I'm wondering if Tristana is going to go for a cheater recall with the minions. Uh, no, she decided to stay, but this is not good for Graves because Tristana has an XP lead, and when she hits level 6, she's going to all in. Absolutely. I think Trist, um, yeah, that'll be pretty free. Just in general, she does. She out damages the Graves so heavily, uh, especially early, e even early games. Uh, late game, it'll be even more so, I think. Um, 
And I'm not sure about this Graves mid pick. Oh, and there boy. we go. Graves recently got a nerf in his armor, oh. and you're seeing that come through. Look at that. It's going to, yep. Brought down to about 35% health. Yeah, he's not happy. Out of health pots, so is Triss. Um, they will get a little bit from the Dorons, but... Okay, so we see Rakan coming over a little bit. Noodle wants to do some Noodle things. He wants to grab this Trist, but she knows what to do. She'll save the W. Okay, so wow. Gray's flashes, um, but that force, you know, forces Trist to flash. She does live with a little bit of HP there. Um, it's tough there because you know you gotta you gotta save the jump for Rakan because mm -hmm. he will interrupt that shit. He, you know, it's not like uh, someone else. Who, who is it? Um, I don't know. One of them has an uninterruptible movement. Um, Trist oh, Ezreal. does not. Yeah. yeah. Well, his, yeah. His is like a, a flash. That thing's really nice. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, okay. So we see J4 coming on down. Uh, Zig's a little bit weary. He's going to get spotted out and they're right at the turret. So J4 really can't get much here, but they could pressure for an early Drake if they want to. Ooh, you know, I think this is a good time right now. Hecarim's oh, right no. here. Oh, boy. Okay. So that Gromp went to J4. Um,. Hecarim a little bit low from that, oh, just above half. I think, yeah, now is the time to go right onto this dragon. Yeah, Might and not even need Swain. And what can he really do? Look at the item diff between the junglers. Got a pickaxe for J4, and Hecarim has just level two boots. Yeah, kind of perfect for this guy to take an early dragon. We see Rakan coming over Wait, a little bit, showing his now, presence. Am I tripping? Did you see level two boots on Hecarim? Now not there anymore. Oh, yeah, I think he undid that. That He oh, may okay. have bought another longsword. I did see the cooldown boots there. Yeah. Um, all gone. He wants to... <laughs> he yeah, saw the... Like, we mentioned the pickaxe. He's like, oh, wait a minute. You're right. I need yeah. some damage here. Um, yeah, a little early for those cooldown boots, I think, but it makes sense on a Hecarim. It's Big not good. He guy. J4 is up a couple camps already, and J4 is going to scale way harder into late game. He's a Jarvan the fourth. He is the fourth. The fourth. I want to see the fifth. You know, oh, where yeah. is he? Give me the V, not the IV. Give me the V. He hasn't been born yet. Locks, where you at? Oh, my God. So, so, <laughs> so right here we see J4 coming down. I'm, I'm thinking a two-man flag and drag there. Yep, there Ooh. it is. So uh, forces Ziggs to flash. Rakan going to sacrifice himself a little bit. Ends up Wing out and burning the ignite from Nautilus. So and that's nothing there. Good for them they didn't get a kill, but wow. I'm surprised they didn't just freeze the wave there and they chose to shove it out. Surprising decision. They could have frozen the wave there and forced Ziggs and Rakan to come up the lane with no flashes. True. That'd be very scary for those guys. Um, Ziggs now pushed to his tower. Another fun little look at top lane. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. Farmville hey, up top. look at them up there. <laughs> <laughs> They're so crazy, those guys. Look at them. Uh, Trist getting some more farm. Not too big of a difference at all in any of the lanes for farm at the moment i mean top lanes with 10 cs diff but that's not too crazy considering malphite has an assist mm -hmm. so that gold kind of evens out for them oh my god swain is ready to go but it looks like they are gonna get away i mean i i don't know if swain could have done that or not we do see that he popped his ghost and shout out to w nami in mid lane for keeping up in farm i mean he did die here but he's been keeping up in farm with the tristana so surprising but he gets 2v1 then i mean I don't know what you were expecting here against Tristana mid as Graves. There's oh. not really much you can oh, do. Oh, he's gone. Oh, my goodness. So that's quite the follow from the Nautilus and Hecarim. And we see, we see Malphite a little low here. The Ram. Ooh. A good ult. Oh, boy. Okay, so that was tough. Maybe ult away instead. Right? True. He flashed and ulted. I feel like <laughs> you could get away. Considering, I mean, Orin wasn't even that low. I, I get what you were going for. That was pretty sick. Yeah, I'm not going to um, lie. For a second, I, I was there with him. I was believe, I was a believer. I thought he was cooking. Right. <laughs> but uh, no, he just kind of cooked himself there. He did. Unfortunate. Fell into the uh, frying pan a little bit. And this is really bad. Both objectives on both sides of the map going to uh, Obsidian. Right. And so oh boy. this Hecarim is really starting to fall behind now. And you don't... Yeah, I see 3K, about 31K to 26K. Uh, to 20, yeah, 26K, uh, 2.6K rather on the side of uh, the jungler for UMass. This is not looking good for this Hecarim. He really needs to get some ganks off. His champion's going to become irrelevant if he doesn't get anything done by the mid game. Yeah, I feel like this guy needs at least something in the early game to get moving. Um, once If he does get that, he can definitely um, get some stuff done. Oh, okay. Oh, a quick Rakan jump over the wall to avoid that Nautilus hook. But back to Hecarim. It looks like he wants this Swain bot lane. He might get him too. Um, Swain... 
I feel like he could do some work here with that all. It is up. He's gonna yeah. hurt the. He's gonna hurt the Hecarim. Oh my oh, God! Wow. That Ziggs bomb barely, barely in the range there. Um, does not manage to pick up the Hecarim. Goes down. A couple assists and a kill for the Ziggs. Nayala coming in clutch with that ult. If he had not hit that, that Hecarim was dead, and that would have been really bad. That would have been a reset and regen, and Ziggs would not have been able to do anything there. Some serious consequences if. Swain avoided that. The problem is if Nautilus were there, that was an easy 3v2 for the side of Obsidian. So it does not bode well for this bot lane. True. I feel like we haven't seen Nautilus bot in a little bit. He is here now, but he's been doing a decent job roaming. He does have 80% KP, given it's only five kills at the moment. But oh, we see J4 <laughs> meets Rakan in the jungle. It looks like they're going to come up. They want to grab this guy. Oh, no. He canceled the ult. Oh, or the jump, boy. rather, yeah. Oh, Ziggs is just dead. He's gone. Um, that's looks a like Rakan has to flash as well. Yep, so there we go. A, a complete win. And that's a really big engage off of Rakan, and that's going to be not, it's not going to be there for the next dragon. And that's really bad because UMass really needs to start stacking some objectives. They are losing out. Very true. Only a 900 gold difference, so nothing crazy, but OBJ wise, I mean, yeah. Here's the Rift Herald. That that tower is dead. Three people here. Boom. Very nice. Get some plates while they're still here. That's a um, lot of gold. And yeah, that dragon's up in, I mean, 15 seconds. These guys might just rotate right over there. Maybe Triss comes down. You see Hecarim in uh, Blue Side's jungle at the moment, near the blue buff. Not close to the dragon. So, oh, Trist seems to recognize what's happening here. Wants to get away. But Pokes she's Hecarim. Tristana. Yep. Has that foresight, and yes, Jarvan and Nautilus will once again duo the dragon. This time, it is the Infernal at 12 minutes, and I mean, these guys are doing some work for their team. Um, duoing the dragon each time, Swain comes over real quick. So, okay, so Graves and Trist had a little bit of a thing there. Oh, he, so she's diving in. She's going in on this Graves real quick. Nautilus is coming over. Hecarim cannot provide backup. He is way too low right now. Get some fruits. Eat some mangoes real quick. So does Graves. For <laughs> sure, I mean, <laughs> mangoes are good for the soul, good for the body. Oh, a lot of guys here. So, okay, J4 goes right over. Oh, uh, the Rakan W. Okay, the... Uh, the oh, oh, that counter engage oh, is beautiful. Jumps over the Orn alt. Manages to get one, two. Oh, boy. So Big Swain's Daddy here. Swain alts. Oh, and Tristana's ultimate doing massive work they're pushing two members back denying kills jeez okay so that was that was a little bit of a cluster right there they, a lot of stuff going on hey this is the oh, uh, wow. champ slicer was giving me a you know, uh, quick uh, we usually want to show off transitions are pretty hype they're not bad they're pretty solid they are <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty pretty sweet graphics shout outs to sls not bad at all and we see Swain now has completed his torment. He's 4 2 and 2 with 300 gold bounty. Trist 2 0 and 3 with a Kraken and Greaves. 150 gold bounty. These guys are powerful right now compared. I mean, Graves has, you know, he has his Hydra. Ziggs also has his torment and a decently stacked tier on his way there. So I'm not sure about the Graves first item. He's building a Ravenous Hydra. I mean, it's going to help. A Shoving the lane. I mean, I don't know if they want to go for a split push. Oh. You don't have a strong enough jungler to go for a split push. Right, and Rakan just gets gangbanged in the in the top mid bush right there. Unfortunate. He is hurt. He is crying at the moment. That guy is, is dead. He's listening to Radiohead in the car right now. He's oh. hurt. Yeah, Ziggs is also <laughs> dead. Who killed him? Trist soloed him, I think. Oh, oh my wow. God, what's going on here? What is going on here? Surely you saw the three. And we see Graves wants to do something as well, but... I mean, you're 1v3ing, and now the teleport comes in. I mean, <laughs> wow. Uh, what's, uh, what are you guys doing, guys? What's going on? And and, this uh, is, you know, really, Malphite mm -hmm. could kill that guy, I think, if he wanted to, but he's going to back off. This is the absolute worst position for a Hecarim to be in. Zero, four, is... three assists. Oh, boy. Meanwhile, his opposition is up about 1,000 gold and has first full item already. Hecarim has yet to complete his first full item. He's invalidated until he gets something on his uh, in his inventory here. Oh, man. He really he really needs to complete something. And what's he going to do? He's a Hecarim against a Malphite Tristana Swain. If you aren't ahead early, what are you ulting into? 
How are you going to try to front line for your team? Definitely cannot. Not an option for that guy right now. Especially, I mean, this guy went... I feel like there's a general thing where if you're behind, usually you go tank so at least you can <laughs> do something. Um, we see the cooldown boots and the call fields Warhammer still. Who is this? Look at this Swain. He's trying something. Maybe he'll get yeah. the Rakan. Wow, Swain man moving. Yep, the Ignite does get it. Um, Orin wants to try something on him, but still doing so much damage on the follow-up for a couple of these guys. And, yeah, looks like Orin ends up going down as well. Thank you. <laughs> Ziggs, no HP. <laughs> Needs to be careful for the Swain. I mean, someone might sneak on him. Oh, someone might sneak on him real quick. And that was know. impressive Swain bravery to the max is 1v3-ing. Oh, God. Oh, no! Frymaster96, Hecarin is down again, and so is, so is the Ziggs. These guys <laughs> are doing something today. Um, one. Like, has, like, this is really not there. going the way of UMass here. DA Obsidian is putting on a clinic, absolutely destroying eight kills on Swain. Their carry is so overloaded, and Swain is the definition of a mid-game power spike champion. This is absolutely not what you want, especially against a Graves and a Hecarim, who are both medium-ranged and short-ranged champions against, against um, a Swain Nautilus bot lane. You know, it would make sense if Graves had some... Ooh, now it's going to a little bit caught out. I think he goes down. Yeah, he's the dead. Malphite's here. The Ziggs ult might pick him up. Yep. Oh, but Jarvan wants to go in. So is Malphite. A oh! man Malphite ult right in. Tristana following up with a bunch of auto attacks. Bam, bam, bam. Looks like Rakan goes down. Bada bing. And um, Graves died as well. So now we have Orin chilling. Ziggs is going to go down to the... Trist up there, and that is an ace right here and for now, DA Obsidian. I don't know if that was one loss. I don't wow. know if that was intentional, but I want to give credit to Magnum Buck, the Nautilus, for walking up slightly just to give the ultimate angle for that Malphite alt to hit four. So that was pretty disgusting. Perfect timing too. I mean, these Absolutely. guys are just all in the same bush. I feel like they're not exactly thinking about what they're doing there. And Maybe they are like, "Hey, we're out of here. Let's just leave." But no one's covering your tail right there. You're just going to get slapped. The problem is you have a Swain who's building uh, Leandries, and you have all these health, steel, and a uh, Malphite. You really should have built Lethality on this Graves' first item. You know, the Ravenous Hydra, great. It's great for pushing waves, but you know your jungler's behind. You're not going to get that split push. So what are you doing building this Ravenous Hydra? You really should have Penetration. At least do some damage in fights, but he needs it. it's not going well. He needs it. And we see Jarvan coming right down bot lane, going right onto this Graze alongside Tristan. And it looks like, it looks like that he, yeah, he gets out of there. I don't know what happened exactly there with a J4 alt, but, <laughs> and the Orin TP is canceled. They get out of there real quick. A little bit of miscommunication, perhaps. Um, they want to exit. Orin wants to 2v1 with his alt. Maybe he can get this Nautilus. I don't know. Yeah, you're tanky, brother, um, but not that tanky. These guys are doing a lot of damage. Ziggs all coming through. The Swain is here to save him. Nautilus, I think, will get out. Um, oh, a miss Ooh. on the Malphite Elf, but that's okay, because now Swain is legendary. The Raven himself, the main man, or is he a crow guy? I don't really remember. He's going hard. Trist is 1v, 1v1ing the Gray's bot lane. But we see Hecram here ready to do something. Alts him out. Very nice. And dodge the Rakan W. Wow. Oh, my God. So this guy's running out. I mean, he's running. We you, do see the Graves with the E flashes away. You guys may recall a couple of weeks ago, JDK was juking folks like crazy on his Nico, and he's doing it again on a Ooh. different champion. He's very nice right now. Problem is Graves has his ult. I think he wants to snipe this. Jarvan is going to try to take the... Yep. Okay, oh, nice. wow. Smart of Jarvan very to good. body block the ult in case, you know, the initial damage is way bigger than the splash damage after the uh, shell explodes. Wow. And, wow. <laughs> Wait. Not the, the W. Burn. Certainly not. <laughs> and his Swain oh, is 25 God. stacks, fully stacked Magi. Y'all better fucking run. I mean, Rakan, just leave, buddy. Leave. Yeah. Get out of there, my friend. Honestly, Swain can just 1v5. Get out of here. 13 and 2. Holy shit. That guy is working right now. He's doing the work for the team. 10.5k gold. For sure. Killian living up to his name. Kill is the prefix. Oh, my God. Rakan's dead. There he goes. 
the unnecessary dunk, right, but whatever. Didn't need to do that. Didn't, <laughs> didn't need to do all that, I think, but he's dead for sure. That guy is dead. Um, wow. So, I mean, <laughs> let's let's take a look real quick at the macros. There's been so much action in this game. Let's look at the big stats here. So it's 26 kills to seven. Day Obsidian. Close game. Right. Um, <laughs> like a seven and a half k gold lead at the moment. I think these guys um, might be a little bit lost. There's three dragons as well on DA Obsidian. They have soul point in two minutes if they want. I think they can pretty easily grab this considering the, how the other ones have gone. Malfoy getting a little bit caught out here. Mm -hmm. He does have his ult. Yep, just made nice. it right out there on the three man Swain W to slow them all down. Dodges the Orn ult, or you know, arguably Orn missed horribly. Uh, Rakan Wing on to the Nautilus, wants to try to get something for his team. Okay, so now J4 is back in here. Only these two against four. Okay, yep, that's fine. And Tristana see, onto the Orn. Go for it. Okay, and they, they grab him. Jeez, I mean. And that started so beautifully. They turned it. They had um, they had that Malphite just where they wanted them. I uh, wanted him, rather. And then they just overextended. But they had a great thing going. They blew two ultimates. Oh, it's not and, even done either. And Nautilus lives after all that. Now they're paying the price, but they had something really good going. And they just are desperate and really try to get a kill there when it wasn't happening. You already blew two ults in a flash. You can just back off and maybe try to pressure an objective. You would think. You would think. Um, I think the problem is they're not thinking at the moment. UMass, you guys might need to back up and regroup real quick. You have one minute until this dragon is up. That is going to be a mountain soul. Um, I don't think you want Malphite with mountain soul. No. Swain, you don't want free tankiness. This guy is going to, I mean, he's already gigantic. You don't want this guy to have free stats. You're going to have to deny that, prioritize heavily that soul denial. And Josh, that's so true. You do not want a mountain soul on a engage comp with Swain, who's just going to lifesteal like crazy already, having that extra shield on top of it. Plus, UMass is running a wombo combo alt to destroy the enemy comp because Graves alt. Hackerim alt and uh, Ziggs alt, they need to burst someone down immediately. They're not a great comp for long skirmishes. As opposed to a Tristan who's going to DPS, Swain is built for long fights. He really is. And Swain is so fed this game. This is the worst <laughs> circumstance they could be in. Oh, you mass, that is. Jeez, for real. I mean, Jarvan is, is so powerful. A, a little bit of a failed attempt at an engage there from from Nautilus onto the Hecarim, but that's okay. It looks like they're still going to wow. go with J4, the two-man. Wow. Oh, my God. So, yeah, that's a that's a big J4 slam there onto the Ziggs. I think Rakan's going to make it out. Um, a quick pickup onto the Ziggs right there. Ooh, Triss dies. Where'd she die? Oh, top lane. She, she died to the Graves. Graves is actually full HP right now. I'm not sure what happened up there, but, mm -hmm. yeah, she died. Um, he's going to grab some... Some turret damage real quick. And we see the skirmish mid is happening at the moment. Rakan is dead. And then, uh, yeah, so is Hecarim. Nothing too new there. I would imagine there's some kind of surprise out of the bush shenanigans going on top lane. Which Graves is very strong in. You know, he's still Graves. He'll still scale. But you don't have much of a team around you. You may be Graves, but you can't 1v5. And you're still going into a 15-2 and two swing close range champion i mean what's going on why are these guys fighting this guy yeah y'all see the same stats as me right what, what are you doing this guy is way too big to be even one of the twoing i mean he's gonna be perma cc'd by all five of you and you need to do something or they just don't even bother going near him frankly um, that's a soul as well umass maybe want to talking about next game in their comms because this is looking like a swift end to this game right it's only 24 minutes these guys and what's funny here is the gold lead is 7k not much different from what it was before most of it is on that swain at 13k compared to uh zigs at nearly 8.5 so that is big plus of course the jarvan at 10 with hecarim at 7.2 so that is where most of the gold lead lies right there mm -hmm. um really not the spot the exact opposite of the spots you want it to be and trist herself six one and five doing some serious work with the um quick blades and the kraken so yeah this, this is looking tough for the old ye old umass here for sure and this is really looking like a draft difference a very strong draft diff and you're seeing it culminate in these leads 
and all the carries on the side of Obsidian are fed, whereas the gold is distributed, yeah, on two of the carries, but your third carry, your Hecarim, is no gold. Oh my god. Riz is trying to get his way out of there. Manages with the flash. Rakan is going to get CC chained and killed. Ziggs wants to run away with that W. Ooh, pulled out of the base by the Swain E. He is dead. I know. Goodbye. He channeled his inner scorpion, said, get over here, and just Very slapped nice. him up. He's dead. I think that's Baron for D. I'm sitting here. Um, we see Orn. Yeah, he's just chilling. I mean, I get it. It's not like you can, <laughs> not like you can really make a difference at this <laughs> Baron fight right now. Orn's watching the world burn uh, around him. Right, you'll get some gold. Uh, Hecarim is grabbing Raptors. I, I feel like, yeah, he probably, he probably. I mean, you could try for the steal. These guys want to grab a tower real quick, which I understand actually. That's fair enough. You know, grab a quick OBJ while they're over there. Um, make sure you run the fuck out though. Get the hell out of there for sure. Yeah, TP out of there. Maybe get the bot tower too. It was a really smart teleport. You yeah, knew not bad. J4 was gonna chase him down, and they can get a second turn. That was really smart. Yeah. Now they got a piece. Now they got a piece out. Like just get out of there. Um, that, yeah, that's a Baron up. Uh, Baron up. Baron and sold up Obsidian. Um, very very scary. Very 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 scary right now. Um, J4 has not died in a long time. Same with Swain, as you can tell by the bounties there. These guys are doing some serious work. Uh, J4, 24 KP. Swain, 29. So they're very involved in these team fights. Um, I, don't know, I don't know what UMass is really doing here. They got to try to defend this. Uh, it's a Baron and Soul. Like I said, not much. I feel like you can do. Zig's going to try to poke him down, do something. Yeah. But even the minions aren't taking damage. And frankly, there's not much they can do. I think it's smart to give up the inhib. They're going to have to fight for these... Uh, Oh my god. Nexus turrets, but the only tank they have is Orn. Oh my god. Yeah. And yeah, look at Hecarim doing negative damage. He really can't do anything. He used his ult. He can't get out. No flash. Wow. So they almost killed Swain there. He managed to get out with his flash. But he's still there for the ease. Yep. And this is going to be GG. I think this is easily GG for sure. Um, we see Graves. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. The follow ups on the CCs from these guys are so sexy. Um, the Obsidian is certainly communicating as far as chaining these CCs together. And they come out with the win. Yeah. Um, dominantly as well for a game one. 27 minute success. All the dragons in the game, plus the Baron. Um, that was serious from the Obsidian. They, yeah. they showed up. And that uh, was such a serious go. composition diff, a serious difference in play early game. I mean, DA Obsidian showed up for this match. They really showed up. Like, quick, off the bat. These guys, I don't think they really wavered at all. Um, no. Which is not exactly unlike them, but we've seen games in the past where they, you know, had a tough early game or something. And then mid-game, they come back a little bit, back and forth with the team. By the end of the late game, they're, you know, they're doing something crazy. But here, they didn't have to struggle with that mm -hmm. um, from the, you know, from the beginning. They're doing some work, um, and they definitely deserve that win. Yeah, and time after time, you know, not you know, pun not intended, but Void has really been the rock for this team. Uh, Void has always been playing a weak side top laner and managing to get the crucial engages and crucial alts, whether it's on Kale, whether it's on this Malphite. He just does his part, and he does it well every single time. Really what you want out of top laner, someone who's consistent, someone who's always going to show up, even if it means taking a backseat. Right, do you, you know? That's how it goes up there in the old top lane. You do what you gotta do. <laughs> yeah. You're not gonna be the star most of the time, but sometimes you are, you know, four, a couple four man alts from the mouth fight, clean as hell, very, very big part in some of the team fights. Um, you know, you, you did what you had to do right there, and it's very, that's admirable, and we appreciate mm -hmm. that always from the top laners. Um, massive win from D Obsidian, um, and we're gonna go, after a quick break, I believe, we're going to go into game two of Absolutely. the series. Sit we'll tight. We'll be right with you.